Universal's opening a brand new land. And you're coming with us to steal the moon. You're going to be very proud, mom. Hey there, ManFam. Universal Studios is opening the brand new Minions Land tomorrow, and we're taking you to the media preview. We're gonna ride the new attraction, eat some of the new snacks, interview some of the creatives behind it, and maybe have a few surprises along the way. So, let's get to it. Let's go. Let's steal the moon. <laughs> Very excited to ride Illumination's Villain Con Minion Blast. TM. Should probably throw a TM on that one. That's a nice long one. <laughs> uh, but it is a blaster challenge and it is themed to the Minions movies. And you are going to be fighting to have the final spot in the Vicious Six, like in Minions 2 Rise of Gru, which I watched yesterday. So. <laughs> and by yesterday, we mean this morning at 2 a.m. That's true, but we're ready now. Uh, the Vicious Six are a notorious group of villains, and you are looking to replace the final spot after they kick out one of the super villains. So you are trying to be a super villain. Alan, who's your favorite in the Vicious Six? I like the guy that kicked out. I like Wild Knuckles. That's fair. I, I like both bell bottoms and nunchucks. Nunchucks is very Nunchucks funny. Nunchucks is very good. But in order to become a villain, to enhance your experience, if you have the Universal uh, Orlando app, you can actually make your own villain name and then collect points and scan things both in the queue area and on the ride. Alan, what is your villain name? Professor Blitz. And Air Jaws. We're ready. Before we could ride the new attraction, we had to meet some minions at the Illumination Theater, which is a new meet and greet location where you can meet the minions as well as some other really fun characters like uh, the Stars of Sing. Johnny and Rosita are out there right now. So this is the new official place where you can meet the minions. It's super cute. The characters rotate. They do a little dance number. It's adorable. Crush the intro. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I do wish Norbert was here, though. He's my favorite minion. The naked minion? Yes. The one that finds the starfish and puts him up here instead of down there. He's an idiot. He's very funny. We're going to steal the moon! We're going to steal the moon! Soon! We will get the moon, Mom! You will be very proud! <laughs> Jesus! We just had the opportunity to talk with Mike Yellow, who's the Senior Director of Creative Entertainment here. And he pointed out a lot of really neat things about the Illumination Theater, but there are two that uh, I think I really want to highlight. One is the freeze on the door. He said they spent a lot of time working through creative to sort of conceptualize and create that door where they've hidden a bunch of different characters throughout the different Illuminations franchises. He also pointed out the lighting and that it looks amazing at night and that each character that comes out has different music, has different lighting effects, and it's really adaptable to whatever Illumination characters they want to put here, which includes Gru and the Garls, the Minions, the Sing characters. <laughs> One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Stunning. He said to watch out for the ticket booth because something could happen there. But it looks like the minions are coming. Those screens, the left side will show who is currently out and visiting you, and on the right side will show who is coming. Next up on our exploration of Minion Land, it's time to get some treats. So the three snack stands are the Bake My Day Bake Shop, the Freeze Pops Popsicle Stand, and the Pop Banana Popcorn Kiosk. So we've been to these places before, we've tried a few of the treats, but we're gonna try a few more. Here at Pop Banana Popcorn, you can get banana flavored popcorn, regular popcorn, a couple of the specialty drinks, the PX41 punch and the antidote, the Wells banana bread beer, and you can get really cute minion popcorn buckets, including this one of Bob taking a selfie with his teddy bear. There's also Disco Bob, minions on a road trip. Very cute. Oh, we're definitely not trying to share a chair right now. Not at all. So that we can both fit in the frame to try the legendary Pop banana, banana flavored popcorn. Do I like it? I like it. Yep, I like it. I don't not like it. Here's the deal. It tastes more like banana bread than super artificially banana. Yeah, I thought it was gonna be more runty. You know what? I have an idea. 
This is regular popcorn. Could you get it together? Huh? Stop throwing the precious banana popcorn. It is surprisingly tasty. The mix and match is probably gonna be pretty epic. I'm not gonna lie to you. Oh. I did not expect to enjoy this as much as I am. It honestly tastes more like kettle corn than anything with a slight banana flavor, but honestly, it's just a nice sweet salty number. And combo is good. But I think I'm more excited to try popsicles. Oh, same. That's next. After our delightful banana treat from the popcorn stand, we are on to Freeze Ray Pops, where I feel like we are on a quest to eat all things banana. At Freeze Ray Pops, you can get some artisanal specialty popsicles. You have ones themed to Minion, Gru, and Vector, and also some of what would be considered more the standard, although they look to be anything but standard popsicles, like cotton candy, cheesecake, lemon mint, and cookies and cream. Now, I have had the lemon mint before, and it was delightful, so I'm excited to try another one. We got our Minion Pops. Some of us quite literally have a Minion Pop. <laughs> I got Cocoa Nut. I got Blue Banana. Ooh, it's gonna dye your face blue. I bet it's blue in there. Worth it. All right. Maybe. Blink. Oh. Mmm. This is awesome. Was not expecting the white chocolate exterior. Oh, brain freeze. This actually tastes really good. Fred. Do like banana? Not for you. The coconut is very good, very light. This is a, where well that is almost like an, an iced popsicle type situation. This is a little bit milkier, creamier. And let me tell you, you have to like banana flavored things. As somebody who does like banana flavored items, this is for me. That is much more artificially banana flavored than the popcorn was. This, like Alan said, very refreshing, very light, not a ton of overwhelming coconut flavor. Although I will say the lemon mint we tried during the soft open, I liked that one the best of all the flavors we've tried so far. But it's a hot day. You're in Florida. A popsicle sometimes just hits the spot. I have real coconut piece I just got. Mm. Clearly I hate it. I really do wish that I didn't have all of the accoutrement, all the exterior on this. But one thing I will give them credit for, well, there is a little bit of artificial banana. I just got some real banana chunks too, so. And the last stop on our sweets crawl is the Bake My Day Bakery. It is a pink explosion in here, and I'm loving it because I'm in my Barbie era. But here you can get all kinds of treats. We tried the macarons before. They've also got s'mores, cupcakes, all kinds of cute desserts as well as a lot of fun Minions merchandise. There's a lot of the Unicorn merchandise in here, but I think we're gonna try some more treats. They've got a few new things in the bakery case since we came for the soft open, so we're gonna do it again. On the top, we've got macarons, we've got Bananas Foster, Blueberry Lemonade, Cookies and Cream, Chocolate Pretzel, Cotton Candy, and Raspberry Champagne. For your s'mores, you've got a Fluffy the Unicorn, a Minion, an Evil Minion. For your baby whoopie pies, you've got Raspberry Lemon, Cotton Candy, Birthday Cake, Chocolate. There's a Banana Cream Minion Swiss Cake Roll. There's a Tim the Bear Sugar Cookie. There's a Bob Sugar Cookie. There's a Fluffy the Unicorn Sugar Cookie. There's a PB&J Cake. Pop. Chocolate banana cake pop, banana cream cake pop, bunny cupcake, shark cupcake, minion apple, evil minion cupcake, and a minion cupcake. What's the struggle? There's a shark themed cupcake, which is obviously my natural instinct, but I don't love cupcakes and it's not very minions y. But it's a shark, but it's not very minions y. We got treats. I ultimately went against everything I believe in and got a Fluffy the Unicorn s'more and not a shark red velvet cupcake because I don't want a cupcake. I don't want blue frosting all over my face and sharks, while amazing, are not very minions-y. And I got the evil minion PB&J cake pop that is ever so slowly melting and moving down the stick. So I'm just gonna eat this. Yeah, Boop. cheers. Wow. Is it good? You know? Want to try it? Ooh. It is good. Yeah. I'm trying to get through the texture of this. It's a cake pop, so it's 
moist and chewy. Yeah. The s'mores are all two graham crackers with a marshmallow, and then the chocolate comes from the chocolate that's coating it. It's white chocolate. So it's a little bit sweeter than a regular s'more, but you still have that nice crunch and graham from the graham cracker. This is a little dramatic as far as my sweets profile, but it is good and it's really fun. Kids are definitely gonna love these. As far as the PB&J goes, the J is a grape jelly, ah, purple fingers, and it comes from the exterior frosting here. All the peanut butter comes from the interior cake. Very, very moist. Just an overall really, really good cake. Probably a little bit sweeter than I'm used to, and the texture of the exterior coating is throwing me a little bit, but the flavor is there. I do think of all the things we've tried, I liked the macarons that we had when we came for the soft open. You can get a one of them, you can get a little box of them. I thought those were really fun, but overall the treats in there are very, very cute and very tasty, so no complaints. Worth checking out. I wonder what this eyeball's made of. I don't know. Is it a marshmallow? No. Oh, lost the horn. It's like, is it a jelly bean? Is it a candy treat? It's not a marshmallow. Oh, look at it. Yeah, a little gold. Up next, we are headed to Minion Cafe, which is the main quick service restaurant in the land. It is filled with a delightful selection of Minion themed treats and eats, of which we've sampled before, but I am excited to go and learn more about the offerings here. I am here with Chef Robert Martinez. Chef, could you tell us what you did as far as what your role was in the Minion Cafe? So I have an amazing, super talented research and development team, and my role with them was to let them loose. Um, <laughs> and this is exactly what you get with this menu. Um, the partnership with Illumination was great. Um, anytime you get two uh, storytellers that, that are coming to life, you get a menu like you have today. Um, our goal really was to pay homage to the different characters or to pluck dishes right out of the movies and have them come out to our guests. From a flavor standpoint, Drew's uh, pork belly filling pork sandwich is a must have if you eat pork. Um, it's a slow roasted porchetta. There's apple butter inside there, chimichurri, a mustard aioli, some arugula, and it's sandwiched on a Hawaiian pretzel bun. So you kind of get that sweet, that savory, um, and then you you can't go wrong with the Minion Tots. Oh yeah, they're so cute, you almost don't want to eat them, but almost, you should. Almost, <laughs> but you should, definitely. Um, a lot of them are just getting good love. I just think people just haven't made their way around <laughs> all of them. I mean, Agnes's Honeymoon Soup is one that I recommend as well. That comes straight out of Despicable 3, um, where Agnes made this soup for, for Gru. Um, it's a, a green tomato soup, and it has a gummy bear in it. The gummy bear, don't get scared, is actually just tomato. So it's tomato soup gummy bear that we intend for it to melt into your soup. There's pork belly in there and then we serve it with a pimento and cheddar cheese grilled sandwich that we're pressing in waffle presses. The balance is our culinary program has continued to evolve. Um, so we wanted to have playful, recognizable IP driven dishes, but we add our own chef flavor profiles to it. So, you know, the Minion Swiss roll, it's super cute and it looks great, but we wanted to add a flavor profile of pineapple and cardamom, and that's what it, the buttercream in the inside is. The banana on the side, you know, yeah, it would have been great if it was just a banana, but we were like, you know what, let's just liven this up and give it some acid, and it's actually a passion fruit mousse, so it just gives you a lot of, like, recognizable with unrecognizable flavors that just make you say, hmm. That's delicious. Awesome. Well, I know we came for a soft open and we're blown away by the food and it's adorable in here. So congrats on a new restaurant. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. Now the restaurant itself is filled with fun little nods and details about the minions. For example, you have googly eyes on almost everything. And I'm sure that I'm going to find googly eyes all over the appliances in my kitchen moving forward. Here in the kitchen, which is actually one of the main dining areas, you see the chaos that is occurring throughout the <laughs> throughout the back as minions are working on creating all the dishes that they then send up to these tubes that carry food throughout the restaurant and bring them to the guests at their tables. And while you have Kevin and Stuart here at the central kitchen also aiding, and I say aiding pretty loosely, with the food preparation, my personal favorite is we have Bob here. Bob is stuck in the freezer, but it looks like he's hard at work. It also looks like they've added a few things since we came in. They've added some stock to their freezer. They've got the tomato gummy bears, some frozen banana chips. 
Minions are hard at work. We've tried several of the dishes when we came, but they have set out everything so you can take a look at it. I just want to point out how cute these kids' meals are. That's a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. It's like a pressed PB&J. Then you've got macaroni and cheese and a kid-sized grilled cheese. And they all come with the Minion Tots and mini bananas. Oh. And don't forget, anyone can order a kid's meal. So next time I come here, I'm absolutely getting one. And while the main dining area is the, well, kitchen, one of the other dining areas that you have here at Minions Cafe is the Minions break room. And if you look around, you can see a whole lot of items that you'd find in some break rooms, but with a little bit of a Minion-y twist, like that inspirational poster. Punctuality. You can't be late if you don't show up. I also love that we have an entire school of goldfish in our little water container, as well as <laughs> this board filled with a whole lot of fun references to the Minions movies. Do respect finders keepers. Take a banana, leave a banana. Have you seen my ducky? Please call it found. Rubber ducky for sale, <laughs> only $50. <laughs> Your perfect bath time buddy. Procrastination, because great food takes time. Oh yeah, they have some shark cupcakes in their locker. Um, amongst other items. Of... I like this minion that has a oh. full espresso set up. This has to be Bob's. It is. He's got he's, the crown. He stole the crown. He still has the crown. <laughs> Good for Bob. Way to go, Bob. Popped into this room to grab a few of the desserts. And you can see the pet rocks on the wall here with all the little baby minions. They're so cute when they're little babies. This is probably my favorite Easter egg though. You've got Bob's teddy bear on the wall, like a museum. About to have a minions themed feast. Now some of these are smaller versions of what you would get. They're just little sample sizes for us. You, of course, we get a full meal, but here we've got the cauliflower. We tried this before. Um, it is tempura cauliflower. It's got some coconut rice, edamame, cucumbers, and a sweet chili sauce, which I'm excited about. Uh, we have Lucy's salmon right here. So same accompaniments, but you've got some grilled salmon. Here you've got Drew's pork belly sandwich. I also grabbed some Minions tots and banana chips. You've got Angus's Honeymood Soup here. That's green uh, tomato soup, and it comes with a pimento grilled cheese. And then trying all of the desserts, we've got Otto's Pet Rock, that's peanut butter and jelly, Bob's Teddy Bear Chocolate Cake, the Minion Swiss Cake Roll, and the Fluffy Unicorn Fun Betty Cupcake. A Minion's Feast. Rapid fire food review time. I'm going for the cauliflower. I'm going for the salmon. I took my sauce on top. That's fun. I like that you got a little pipette. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not normally a fish guy, but the salmon paired with the sweet Thai Ooh. chili sauce, That's the great. blue rice, and the Thai cucumbers, incredible. We tried this before, and both of us said that it was awesome, but needed a little bit of a sauce. This sweet Thai chili sauce, a little bit sweet, a little bit of heat. This is solving the problem. This is an awesome dish, and even though this is a vegetarian dish, I would eat this absolutely. Next up. I am having the pimento cheese grilled cheese with the green tomato soup. And I am having the pork belly sandwich with minion tots. They're so cute. I love this soup because it tastes like tomato soup, but it's got a little bit of acidity because it's green tomatoes and it's less sweet than regular tomato soup. So with the grilled cheese, with the, it has a little bit of spice from the pimento, with the little oil drizzle on top, it's fantastic. If you are a pork eater, this pork is stellar. You can taste the apple butter on the interior that has been sort of soaking up that flavor. It's rich, with a little bit of sweetness from the apple. Mm. And that delicious pretzel bread on the top. It's like a this, Hawaiian roll pretzel bread. Yeah. It is just sweet enough, just savory enough, a little bit salty, and just so rich while still being light from the apple. This is a favorite. I'm going to dip that in tomato soup. <laughs> oh yeah. What's amazing about this restaurant is you think that a, we said this before, when, you'd think when you go to a Minions themed restaurant at a theme park, it would be lots of like burgers and maybe they would be cute, but it wouldn't taste that amazing. There's tons of flavor. There's tons of variety in the menu. I think they outdid themselves at this restaurant and I believe that now and I believed it before. Hasn't missed yet. All right, well, first of all, yours seems so much smaller than mine. Well, first of all, the cupcake is a miniature cupcake for the media event. It's normally a full-size big cupcake. I have a rock. Yeah, it's Otto's pet rock. Wait. You like banana. Oh, I've lost the cupcake. I don't think that's a banana. It 
It's a moose. Huh. Ooh. Follow-up flavor is not my favorite. Okay, cool. Do I eat the eye? Look it in the eye and then eat him. Is that good? The cake roll doesn't really have any additional flavoring. It is a very spongy cake, moist. The interior frosting is sweet, a little bit too sweet for me. But overall, I think if you if you are a fan of cake rolls, and I've had many growing up, these hit the mark, and I would say are better, arguably, than most things you're gonna find elsewhere. I'm gonna try Otto's Pet Rock, which is peanut butter and jelly inside. Ooh. That's cool. It's a layered situation. Mmm. Good. I love peanut butter. I love jelly. It's a creamy texture, so if that kind of moussey texture isn't for you, you might want to skip this one. Little burst of fruit from the jelly. I like it. That might be my favorite dessert. I'm calling it now. I'm also going to try the cake that's shaped like, it's like a mousse cake. Yeah. It uh, looks like Bob's teddy bear. What is the exterior? Ooh. That's good. I expected that to be overwhelmingly rich, and it's actually somehow light. It's still very chocolatey, spongy exterior, mousse interior, but it's it's pretty just one note of chocolate, but better than I expected. It has that um, it has that almost bitterness of like cacao, of cocoa powder, and I think that's what saves it from being too sweet. Yep. Just like yep. Yeah. Now you gotta eat a unicorn. Now I'm gonna eat a cupcake. I just I just chopped part of its face off. Oh, you're just gonna eat it. Mm -hmm. That's fun petty cake. It's good. The the cupcake is for sure the least exciting of the desserts. It's the most straightforward, but if you've got kids with you that want a good cupcake, it's a good fun petty cupcake and it's really cute. For me, I still think popsicles win over. Yeah. I would get a popsicle because it's hot and it's nice out there, but Truly, this restaurant's adorable, and the food has all been awesome. That's not a joke. I'm going back to eat more. I want another Thai. Did we eat all the Thais? Yeah. Banana? And now it's finally time to blast some minions. I don't think we actually get to shoot minions. Oh, well, what are we... What are we doing? We're just ca trying to cause destruction to be the most impressive villain there. Oh, cool. So, like, you're a chaos twin, so you've got this in the back. <laughs> now, here at Illuminations Villain Con Minion Blast TM, you huh. are attending Villain Con, which is a convention for villains, as the name would suggest. And I love this, where all the minions are cosplaying as their favorites, Vector and Scarlet Overkill, etc. And it is featuring the Vicious Six. I hope we can impress them. I truly do. Although, the irony that it's just five of them up there because they kicked one out, I like that. It's kind of like how Four Town has five members. One thing to note about the attraction itself is that there's 30 minutes of newly created video that, that features many of the voice actors returning for their villainous roles. <laughs> Unlawful Outfitters, the only place to buy the Eliminator X. Love that. There's also henchman placement system. Life is better with a boss. Lethal nature. Weaponize your garden today. Oh. This feels like what Gen Con looked like, just more evil. We've made it inside to the con now and we're checking out the different booths. This would be your cue, but I love that there's some fun details. Lost and stolen. <laughs> yeah, lost and stolen. Here is the Malicious Motors booth right here where you can paint your uh, stolen vehicles. I love the different colors. They've got Cherry Bomb red and Bank Vault silver, counterfeit green. Got a variety of very funny license plates as well, like the Shady Lady. For Bowden. <laughs> Criminal. This is my new favorite booth, Corrupt Companions. So if you want to adopt a an alligator or a evil dog this is where you'd come and there's a gator here he looks kind of friendly i might adopt him here we have unlawful outfitters where you can get all kinds of evil gear including these are the ski masks that the family in the uh -huh. original minions movie wear when they rob the bank that's nice we also have started collecting things on the app if you see this symbol around, you can scan it with your Universal app in the Minion section and collect things. What'd you get? Got a pacifier. Nelson's pacifier. 25,000 points. Ooh, 
Ooh. The more points you get, the better of a villain you are. We also learned that while you're on the Mini Blaster attraction, you can customize your blaster using the app with a variety of different perks and power-ups. Uh, my inner gamer is really nerding out right now. I just think this is such a seamless blend of technology with an attraction. It's very cool. Um, we started with like Super Nintendo Land, and I love seeing that it's actually extending into other attractions as well. So yeah, before you go on the ride, customize your blaster in the app, and then as you play and do more things, you can unlock more features. So you can edit the specs right there. You can have Fireball Multiverse, but you gotta put Fireball on then. Right now, I think I'm just gonna leave it at my Force Multiverse. What kind of blast are you going to do? Uh, elemental blast right now is lightning bolt. Lightning bolt. Lightning! Are you ready to ride? I'm so ready to ride. Wicked blast of things to Professor Prince. Oh! Yeah! Air jaws. Well, that was so cool. I lost. I played better than I thought I would, but that's because it was physical usage of the shooter game. It's really cool. We weren't allowed to film on the attraction, but basically you get on a moving sidewalk like at the airport, ride through with your blaster and shoot what you can. You can look for those little collectibles that are in the app to try and shoot. That'll get you extra points. Um, and you go through a bunch of different scenes. It's a really long attraction. But it's so much fun. Your hand will be tired at the end of it. Yes. But, you huh. cannot just hold the trigger down like you can on Men in Black. I tried. You have to <laughs> physically shoot each time. There's uh, a ton of rewritability. Oh, yeah. You can unlock things. Now that we've written it and shot things, we have better blasters than we had before. You can continuously try and improve your score. You can go on different missions. If you want to do the classic mission, you can. Or you can change in the app to go on one of the missions from one of the Vicious Six. It's just so, so very good. And the number of Easter eggs they have hidden, both in... I just remembered. What? On the bottom of the ocean floor, there's a sunken ship, and it's the orca from Jaws, and I squealed on the ride. <sighs> it's so cool. I gotta ride it again. I had a little issue syncing my phone up, which is the only thing I have, and it's a little hard to tell what you're shooting at, but overall, once you get the hang of it, it's great. A couple things to know to help you do better. Right before you board, you're gonna look down at your blaster. Regardless of if you hooked up your phone or not, there is gonna be an icon that is a certain color. You are looking for that icon and that color. That is your aim when you are playing the game. So that will help you score. Also, there are plenty of secret things. Anything that's kind of glowing, you can shoot it and unlock some things in the app as well as get extra points. Lastly, we asked some uh, team members and they confirmed that there is no height requirement for this ride. No handheld infants, but besides that, if you can stand, you can uh, ride the attraction. Additionally, normal standard wheelchairs are able to be accommodated on this attraction, not ECVs or motorized wheelchairs, but if you are in a wheelchair, you can sit and ride the attraction. Okay, while it was a blast riding the Minions Blasters, it's time for a spooky preview. We're headed in now to preview Taste of Terror. This is an all new dining experience that Universal is doing this year prior to Halloween Horror Nights. If you want to try some of the food, this is a specialty ticketed event, but we get to go in and be some of the first to experience spooky food here at Universal. <gasps> it's Halloween, y'all. I'm so happy. Oh, this is cool. This is awesome. Um, okay, I'm obsessed with this. Not me immediately running off to find the Stranger Things food. Oh my gosh, there's a Last of Us. <gasps> Y'all, I'm going to start crying. There's a Last of Us booth right there, and there's a Stranger Things booth right there. So this is our first look at all of the food they're doing for Halloween Horror Nights. You've got Surfer Boy Pizza right here, and they even have gone so far as to bring in some booths to feel like you are in the pizza shop. And then right here, we've got, this is from Last of Us. It's the rations from Fedra is listed all over this. There's even a clicker poster. Oh my God. Alan? Alan, I'm freaking out. Alan? There's a clicker. I'm not even scared of that clicker. I'll be scared of that Horror Nights. I'm scared of that one. We are here with executive sous chef Christopher Colon. Could you tell us what your role is with Halloween Horror Nights to start? Uh, so yeah, like you said, I'm the executive sous chef of research and development, and we get to create all the fun and exciting dishes that we have throughout the property. So we do all the marquee events, so Mardi Gras, Halloween Horror Nights, the holidays, and then we also develop all our new concept menus. So Epic Universe moving forward, you know, we, we do all of the fun stuff. To answer, it's exciting. Everything, you know, when we first found out about The Last of Us, we were all hush-hush about 
about it, and I went home and I, you know I told my wife, and we were excited about it. I, I played the game 15 years ago, so to be able to translate that what you're excited about the video game into the food it's just so exciting you know we said it's mushrooms like it, we, <laughs> we could do so many things it's so exciting so you know we have what you have here is the left behind ravioli which is there and that's just a little sneak peek so we have other things and other spots throughout the event too in the Halloween Horror Nights that you'll be able to see even more of it and then Stranger Things I mean it, it's so cool that Surfer Boy Pizza watching <laughs> being able to watch that show and it was like you know what we, we need to bring our version so we didn't want to do the same sliced pizza Hawaiian the you know everybody is so like one way or the other on it so we actually made a French bread pizza pineapple chutney fried spam so it's like a different take on a Hawaiian pizza that's absolutely delicious I think Argyle would like it though it oh, sounds absolutely. like you would enjoy it oh my goodness uh, you know the, the Yeti returns is it's got amazing food so it's where we kind of balance the two so it's kind of have that Canada drop back but Yeti which is like an Asian influence so we merge the two together so we have a poutine where we're doing char siu pork and hoisin gravy yeah. and then at the same time we also have a vegan burnt ends version as well so, you know, we have that plant-based option plus the carnivore, you know, bloody poutine one as well. And last question, of course, there is no Halloween Horror Nights complete without a Twisted Tater. Those are returning, I assume. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> we will never do a Halloween Horror Nights event. <laughs> Twisted Tater pizza fries. Yep, <laughs> they will be back. Is there a new twist on the tater? So there is a new twist. Okay. And, you know, I said recently that we, we try to change the Twisted Tater a little bit each year to make, you know, it more exciting to keep coming back for it. This year, we actually are uh, jumping off of The Last of Us as well. We made the Infected Tater. Oh, my gosh. So it's my a dreams. traditional <laughs> Twisted Tater with the porcini powder and truffle emulsion on the top of it. So... The, the idea kind of behind that is to, you know, in the game Last of Us, you are essentially traveling from point A to point B to save Ellie, right? So we wanted that feel throughout our Halloween Horror Nights event. So you may see Last of Us here, but you might also see it in other locations. Oh my gosh, I'm somehow even more excited for the event. Thank you for chatting with us, Chef. We're going to go try some of the delicious food Absolutely. Now. <laughs> Thank you so much. Last of Us Twisted Tater. Uh, I, I don't think I'm going to leave a Twisted Tater stand. This is my dream. Helen Horn Nights is where dreams come true. They're crushing it. You want to hear something cool I found about that clicker? Yeah. It's all edible. It's Rice Krispie Treats and cake. I don't know if I could eat a clicker, but I wonder, is that a sneak peek? Is there going to be an edible clicker? Maybe. We don't know. We're just guessing on that, but we know for sure there is a Last of Us themed tater. Which sounds delicious and is also very cool. And here is our haul. We picked up the Surfer Boy pizza, which is the take on the pineapple and ham pizza, which as you heard from the chef, is a pineapple chutney with some pan fried spam on a wonderful piece of bread. We've also picked up the left behind ravioli, which is mini cheese ravioli with marinara, truffle cream, and tempura fried enoki mushrooms. I can't get over the, the serving. It's coming in a Fedra rations can. This is like the coolest thing I've ever seen. So good. The chefs also told us that they're doing a Fedra ration bar. It's going to be a Rice Krispie treat that comes wrapped in newspaper, but just like the, the theming. The theming. And because I love coffee and Molly does too, we picked up the Salt Lake City coffee, which is brewed coffee, J.F. Hayden's espresso liqueur, Crusan light rum, vanilla beans, smoked sea salt, and hella smoked bitters. The chefs were talking about that in the game, The Last of Us, which is what the IP is. It's not the show, it's the game, though they are very similar. Pretty much all they can drink is coffee, sometimes wine, so they wanted to do a twist on that for La The Last of Us food. And we also picked up the Surfer Boy Tropical Dream Punch, which is Cruz and Rum, Orange, Pineapple, Lime, Passion Fruit, and Grapefruit Juice with Vanilla Bean. We're doing a table lean. I am trying the Surfer Boy Pizza. And I am trying... Uh, the ravioli. Oh dear. He struggles. Yeah, I am. It's listen. I understand that this is theming, but it is a struggle to get it out of the can. Well. Although in the game and show, it was a bit of a struggle. Yeah. Life, some might say. Yeah, I'm. I I do think fighting clickers for your life is the same as getting ravioli out of a can. They're the exact same thing. Yep. Here you go. Cheers. Clink. Boop. You might have to get one for you. You're rationing the ration? I'm rationing the ration. Wow. 
Look at all of the cheese in there. Oh my gosh. This pizza is quite good. It's French bread pizza, so it's a little thicker than your average pizza slice, but it's nice and doughy and springy, and it has that crispness on the outside, but it's still nice and tender on the inside. I don't love pineapple on pizza. As Argyle says, though, you gotta try before you deny, and I was delighted by that. The little bit of sweetness bounced between that and the saltiness of the ham, and then there's a little spiciness from the jalapeno. Mm. It's definitely pizza, which is probably one of the more simple dishes, but it's, it's unique. And uh, I like that. I think that's a nice hearty dish. And it's also a really fun take. Yeah. It's not just a traditional pizza that you would get in a lot of other representations. The ravioli, I'm trying to think of any notes that I would have for it in terms of ways to improve. And it's hard. The pasta is beautifully cooked. The cheese, it, I mean, it's plentiful within the ravioli itself. You get a little hit of that truffle and there's just a beautiful textural contrast and a little bit of earthiness with the richness of the pasta itself from the fried mushrooms. I could see myself eating a lot of those, and it's already a big serving. There are four ravioli in that can. I just took a sip of the punch. It's not for me, which isn't surprising. It's a sweet juice drink. I will say it's balanced really well. You can taste the alcohol, which is probably dangerous, um, but it tastes like a tropical punch, which just isn't my jam. And while you sample that, or tear it to pieces, I'm going to uh, try the coffee drink, so cheers. Okay, well you can certainly taste the coffee. So if you don't enjoy coffee, probably not going to be the drink for you. It is sweet, but I think the most dangerous part about this is that I don't really taste the alcohol in it, and there is some in this beverage. I don't know if I could have more than one though. It's a little sweet for me, but it, it's not as sweet as the punch, so as far as mixed drinks go, I would gravitate more to this because I love coffee so much. However, I typically, at Halloween Horror Nights, tend to stick with the craft beer, specifically when there's pumpkin on draft. So fingers crossed that's returning. This, however, is dynamite. <clears throat> the more you mix it, by the way, the more you can taste the alcohol. I stand corrected. We got some more food. Yeah, we did. Starting with the peanut butter burger. It's a smash burger with peanut sauce, raspberry jelly, cheddar cheese, shaved onion, jalapeno bacon, and cherry peppers on a vampire bun. Look at that. That's fun. And I picked up the bloody campground poutine, which is Crispy fries topped with an Asian-inspired gravy char siu roast pork, cheese curds, scallions, and some crispy chilies as well. What an interesting fusion. A poutine like with Asian flavors. By the way, they also have a burnt-end option of this that is vegan. Oh, we love that. Oh wow, that's, that is a fresh pepper. Oh wow. Well, cheers. Cheers, clean. So, I don't know how to eat this. Do I have any on my face? Nope. Don't mind me, just gotta wipe the blood off my face. That's what Horror Nights is all about. How's your poutine? I am a fan. I will say, if you have a peanut allergy, there are peanuts on this dish, so avoid. Also, if you get a piece of that pepper, it does have some heat to it, which is nice, although I am a spice food lover. But I, I think that this combo works. It almost feels like they've just subbed out a lo mein noodle for a french fry. Mm. It, it wins. This is this is just very, very good. The introduction of a cheese curd, I'm curious about. So I'm gonna try a bite with a big cheese curd and I'll tell you how we feel. The burger is very good. I'm not really tasting the peanut butter. What I'm tasting is a really good burger, the bacon, a little bit of sweetness, and then the heat from the peppers. I don't actually really taste peanut butter specifically. If I had something I don't like about it, I have two things. One, the bun is delicious and incredibly soft, but it's almost not soft enough to stand up to everything that's on the burger, so it's kind of crumbling in my hand. And two, I don't know if they're gonna plate it this way for actual Halloween Horror Nights or just this Taste of Terror event, but putting the, some of the sauce on top is really cute, but it gets all over your face, which I don't like because I'm already a messy eater. I don't need help. We also grabbed the Hellfire Mini Cake, which is a layered chocolate cake with mango cayenne filling topped with a chocolate guitar. I also noticed some chocolate bats there. It's like too soon, you know? Too yeah, soon. Don't love that. And now? for Eddie Munson. Forever in our hearts. Oh, you got some of the mango cayenne innards. Master of puppets. Mm, a bat. Interesting. The jelly texture is unique. It is an interesting layered cake. The cake itself, pretty standard chocolate cake. Moist, nice. Pretty standard buttercream on top. Yeah. What's throwing me for, I don't know about you, 
But what is throwing me for a loop is the mango cayenne jelly in between. Because you can definitively taste both of those ingredients. It's also very gelatinous. It's not the texture I expected it to be. I like it, because I like the spice breaking up all the sweet. Right. But texturally, it threw me a bit. I'm, my brain is still processing how, how to feel about that texture. Flavors are great. I love mango. I love a little bit of spice, especially around chocolate. It, I feel like it enhances the chocolate flavors really, mm. really well. The guitar is dark chocolate. It's really yummy. Oh, then heck yeah. <sighs> Rip Ride Rocket is Rip Ride right there. Yeah. Um, we just wrapped up with our event, including the preview of Taste of Terror, and we did confirm with Universal PR that everything that we experienced is what it would be like for any of the paying guests. Um, so I was wrong. I thought based on the description that they would also have things like pizza fries and twisted taters, but it is all the new food that we got to sample. And that's how it'll be for guests that purchased the tickets, which actually just price dropped today that we're filming this a few hours go down uh, to 135.99, which I do think could be a little steep for a couple hours eating and drinking, but it is all you care to eat and all you care to drink. The specialty cocktails, they also had like beer and wine. so. I think it depends how much you're going to drink, honestly, to see yeah. if that's going to be worth it for you. But it was really fun to be in there and see some of the themed booths and just get the excitement for Halloween. What was your favorite thing? I think it was the poutine oh. from the Yeti, uh, Revenge of the Yeti. That was a surprise and delight, followed very closely by the ravioli. I got to give it to the ravioli, not ravioli. Ravioli. I gotta give it to the ravioli, not only for taste, it was excellent ravioli, I love that crispy mushroom, but presentation, how could you, I mean, is it in the Fedric Cup? I'm so excited for HHN, it's unbelievable. It's gonna be so good. Well, that is a wrap on our time in Minion Land today. Thank you so much to Universal Orlando and Rip Ride Rocket. I wonder what song we got. I don't know, I hope somebody's playing Kermit right now though. Secret yeah. song. Secret song. Thank you so much to Universal Orlando for having us. It was just so much fun. Minion Land, by the time you see this, it is officially open and part of Universal Studios Florida. It's so exciting when a theme park opens a new attraction or a new land. It's just fun to see the new things. What were the highlights of Minion Land for you? For me, I think it is a tie between the Minion Blaster. Illuminations Minion Con Minion Blaster TM. Yes, that's the one. Illuminations Minion Con Minion Blaster TM. Uh, as well as the Minion Cafe. What about for you? I have to agree. I also really enjoyed Illuminations Villain Con Minion Blaster TM. I think it is such a cool take on the shooter style ride with more reader readability than I've seen in any of those attractions, except for maybe Mario Kart Bowser's Challenge out in California. I love that you can select different missions in the app with the different villains. I love that you can look for secret things and it's gonna have a ton of rewritability. It's gonna be an attraction I wanna ride like every time I come just to improve my score and try and unlock new things. So kudos to Universal Creative for creating a very fun, immersive experience. But I also gotta give a shout out, the popcorn that was <laughs> banana flavored. Who knew? It was pretty delicious. And you know what? It's because it's banana oil. It's a special banana oil, not a flavoring on top. We found that out. That's probably true. And you know what? I like the little meet and greet. Oh, that was nice. That was nice. But truly overall, I think that Minion Land is such a great addition here at Universal Studios Florida. It's not my favorite IP by a long shot, but it's adorable, it's immersive. The food and snacks are good, the attraction is fun, and I think it's a good family themed area to add to these parks. In the meantime, folks, be sure to like the video, subscribe if you are new, follow us on all of our socials, and join us in the conversation on Discord, all those links down below. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly. And I'm Alan. And it has been so minionous. Minionous? Evil? Mischievous? Villain-tastic. Villainous? It's been so villainous. It has been so... I stole the moon. Tell mom. <laughs> she will be very proud. I have stolen the moon. I'm going to do something very big. So big. Steal the moon. <laughs>